They are the forgotten, the unwelcome, the unwanted. Syrians who survived a decade of war, Afghans who fled the Taliban. They remember the more open Europe that took in so many refugees in the surge of 2015. But for them, it's too late. That door has closed. So they're stuck in Serbia, where hospitality has its limits. That's your leg? That's my leg. And that's my back. Now, beaten back by border guards, we meet the migrants caught in a brutal loop, trying and failing to cross into Western Europe. They may look like aimless wanderers drifting along Serbia's border roads, but the roughly 6,000 migrants here know exactly where they want to go. Into the European Union nations, right next door. But they can't seem to get in. The Serbian government provides accommodation for the migrants building up just inside its borders. This migrant centre in the town of Šid, near the Croatian crossing, is mostly used as a base for men travelling alone. Okay. This is your bed? This is your place? Okay. It's pretty basic. It's a difficult situation, man. So I'm in the, one of the overflow tents, which is uh, the bit you don't normally get to see. Most people are housed in an old motel that way, but these tents have been put up because there's just so many people. And I've been told they're heated, but the guys here tell me it's only heated for about an hour every evening. And they're all complaining that these mattresses have all got lice and things in them, so they've all got skin conditions, which they blame on the mattress. It's pretty basic. I'll give them that. How many times have you tried to cross the borders? Uh, four times and seven months from right. Serbia. And after, before I was in Bosnia, and I crossed like 30 times. Really? In Bosnia, yes. Ahmad is staying here. Caught in the crossfire between Afghan forces and the Taliban, he was forced to flee. He's been trying and failing to cross into Croatia. Police catch us, and they're taking our phones, broken down and putting them on fire, and money, everything, and they're going to beat us. And I have the pictures. And that's what did my they bike. do? Was it broken? Uh, or? No, no, it's they're beating with the black stick. You know the police have black sticks? Oh, the truncheons? Yes, of course. Yeah. And they beat on that. Jeez. That looks painful, man. And this is also my left leg. And these are uniformed police officers yes, doing of this? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. They have a badges on, 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 his, on his hand. Mm. And a, a flag of Croatia. Everybody knows that. They've broken my leg, my hand. I don't care because I don't have any choice. If I go back to Afghanistan, I will kill by someone. Mm. What he's been experiencing is politely termed pushback. EU countries actively, and as we've been told, sometimes violently, kicking migrants out before they can claim asylum. It's not legal, and they deny doing it. But apparently, this is the new normal. On the other side of the country, in its northeast corner, is the village of Maidan. It sits on the edge of not one, but two EU countries, Romania and Hungary, with its intimidating border wall. The official population is just a few hundred people mostly retirees and a few farmers. At first glance, this broken old house looks like it's been abandoned. But there's smoke coming from the attic. Yeah, there's some guys up here. Where are you from? Syria. Oh, OK. Thousands of the migrants stuck in Serbia are Syrian. A late wave of those displaced by a decade of war. You've been here how long in Maidan? We are in uh, Serbia. Uh, two months, a hard thing. Tell me in Arabic, it's okay. 
نريد فقط العبور إلى أوروبا فقط. I understand. Nowadays, there are more migrants in this village than locals, and I soon discover this house hasn't been abandoned at all. It belongs to Viritsa Vas, and she's not happy about the state it's been left in. Do you feel safe when you have to come in here and interact with, with the migrants in your house? Zavisno od toga koga ćemo naći. Ako su oni malo onako bezobrazni, onda kažu da je to više sad već njihova kuća i mi tu ne možemo šta da radimo i onda se sukobimo. Roughly how many people stay in here at a time? Od 10 do 50 zavisno od broja koliko ih ima, ali su oni i gore na tavan bili uvek. Stop, the owner is at home. Do not come in. Thank you. That's polite. Sign like this on almost every gate. But the polite notices don't seem to be working. And there are new arrivals every day. Hello. Where are you from? Syria. From Syria? Good, you speak very good English. Civil engineer. Oh, really? You know, before four years, I make my hair same to you. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah? In yeah. Syria? Same, uh, same uh, you know Bob Marley? Yeah, same yeah. Same Bob Marley. Really? And now, let me see you. How's your hair now? Uh, no. Okay, now but you cut I need, it. I need to make up. Yeah, yeah. How long More have you been I, here? Uh, actually, I started yeah. Because I walking, like, from Istanbul. And how long has that taken you? For now, 46 days. 46 days? Yeah. That sounds hard. What I can do. Yeah. In Syria, in the war in Syria, we saw all the danger. Bombs and car bombs mm. and plane and soldier and gun and, uh, mm. you know. So yeah. I don't have it. You've seen it all. Where do you want to go? Uh, actually, I wanted to go to Germany. Because yeah. now I am 28 years. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything. I understand. Today I need to try, tomorrow I need to try, after tomorrow I need to try. Do you have a phone? Great stuff. Mohammed says he's made it this far entirely on his own, with just public transport, good map reading and some swimming. I get the sense he lost a great deal in Syria, but he doesn't want to talk much about his family. He's not ready to share it just yet. He's clearly motivated though, and I want to know why. We exchange numbers, and he says he'll let me know how he goes. Those who do succeed in making it across have to map walking routes around border fences and avoid patrols who use sniffer dogs, aerial drones and heat-seeking cameras. Serbia has long been considered more welcoming to migrants than its EU neighbours, having taken on so many refugees itself during the breakup of Yugoslavia in the 1990s. Most migrants who enter Serbia arrive from the south, into villages such as Vranje, right next to Serbia's border with North Macedonia. There, and in 18 other locations across the country, reception centres have been built, largely funded by the European Union, of which Serbia hopes to become a member. It's the first chance for many to get a warm meal and a bed for the night, and for families, a sense of normality for the kids. I want uh, the border to be opening. It will be very good, very safe for us and for our families. Hala, her five-year-old son Adam and their family arrived six months ago, and they've stayed to recover from their long journey from Aleppo, one of the hardest hit cities in the Syrian war. We have lots of army mm -hmm. around Aleppo mm -hmm. and uh, stop uh, water on the city and uh, stop food all the time of a pregnant of Adam and after that. Mm -hmm. When I uh, get birth for him in the hospital, it was booming outside. And I tell myself, maybe I will not die from the pregnant and the baby I will die from the <laughs> booming. It was very difficult, very difficult. So we decide we have to go. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to leave. It costs us a lot. Mm. And through this whole time, 
you were a new mother. You had a small baby with you. Yes, with Adam. And uh, all the families have children. What was it like for you to have a baby going through all of that? I can show you show some me, photo. Show me the this is us on the way. They've been on the road for two years. She has videos of the boat journey from Turkey to Greece and their trip on foot for 15 days through the forests of North Macedonia. This is us. We hide all the time. What is, what's your plan? Where do you want to go? If we have a chance to Netherlands. Why? It's good for immigration. Mm -hmm. It's good for no racism there. Mm -hmm. And uh, good for uh, children. Mm. And would you apply for asylum here? Would you stay here? No, we want a, a country inside the European Union. Okay. It's a good chance for work and for uh, health and for education, for future. Someday if my son wants to go to study mm -hmm. in any university, or France or... he have a chance. The thing that, really, that I find really difficult is to see Adam, because he's five, same, same age as my son. And you know, you know as a mother, this age is very difficult. Between four and five, my son learned to read. Is Adam learning anything? Just the beginning with the alphabet of Just, Arabic. Yeah. Trying to learn him his name. Trying to read. Mm -hmm. it's a good Are you form. worried that the longer you stay on this journey, the more Adam will be held back? Yes, but I have a hope that it will be finished soon. I don't know why, maybe it's just a hope, but I have a hope. That hope was sparked in 2015, when German Chancellor Angela Merkel opened Europe's doors to a million refugees. Some of Haller's relatives made it through. Politically unpopular, the policy was short-lived. Do you feel like if you left Syria before, it might have been easier for you to get to yes. Western Europe? Yes, my brothers do it in 2014 and 15. Right. They have now uh, original papers and citizenship. Oh, really? Yes, after seven years now mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. six years. Okay, so they're residents now? Yes. Do you wish you left Syria maybe two, three years earlier? Yes, I wish, I wish. I mm. told you, I wish. Hala and her family are comfortable enough in the centre, but they worry about what awaits them when they leave. Anti-migrant and vigilante groups have spent the past year trying to gain followers and influence here. They've stormed migrant centers and live-streamed it on Facebook. They've spread fake news about migrant crime waves. And now, the Serbian government's cracking down too. This video shows police breaking up a makeshift campsite. It was released on social media, not by a migrant group or an NGO, but by the Serbian Interior Ministry. They're keen to look tough on migrants, partly because of political pressure from young Serbians who didn't experience the wars of the 90s, people like Stefan Danicic. He's the spokesman for a small but growing local organization called Youth of Shid. He wants fewer migrant centers and for the police, or even the army, to clear migrants off the streets. How does the presence of migrants in town affect you personally? Stefan, it sounds, it sounds a little bit like uh, you have a fear of the unknown. Like maybe you just need to talk to them and get to know them a bit. Have you ever met any? Would you come with me and meet some migrants? <laughs> Stefan, you sound, you sound scared. <laughs> you are, you're scared. We head off while he thinks about it. Mm. 
So we're about five minutes away from the Croatian border and uh, I can see a couple of guys walking back towards me carrying a bag. Where are you guys coming from? Kadwasia Polus was to game Talado, Munga Container Kizana Chola, Katakuru, Polus or Zadana Kyo, Yasaktiwa Holo Pesi, or Mobile Archer Nawakista, Mobile Alte Mohammed Matikri, or Mundir Kushko Dam Takriban Chaloratayum game that is a bitter of Paskega among your Hila that even Zerter Zara of Watalar show. And you want me to make this to one note is my game of Hale. The Croatian Interior Ministry didn't respond when we raised these allegations with them. I am in Serbia now. I've heard from Mohammed. He sends me updates every night. I am very tired because I wake up at 6 o'clock today. I ate just one biscuit. But uh, after four hours, I'll be trying again. Despite the danger, his plan is to keep trying on foot. He's avoiding Serbia's migrant reception centers. You ready? Yeah. Happy? Well, let's do it. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> Stefan, on the other hand, has agreed to stop avoiding them. He met us at a center in his neighborhood. It's his first time inside a place like this. Wow, good to meet you. This is Stefan. Our guide, Fahim from Afghanistan, is the same age as Stefan. You're up here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how many people sleep here? Uh, eleven. Yeah. Why is it that you have come here? It's a safe place. You have security, peace. But you don't want to stay here. Why? ما تصمیم دارن که بالاتر بریم قصد ما کشور سربیانی هر کدام ما که به اینجا هستیم داخل از کم به خاطر سربیا نامدیم که آماده باشیم اینجا زندگی کنیم هر کدام ما تصمیم داریم که بریم اروپا بریم زشت واش فامیلی نیسو او سوسد نیم عرب سیم زمیل ما او او یه دیگه نیم امیراتی ما او سعودی سکوی عربی لی تاکنون زشت واش اروپا متاسفانه ما امسای خوب نداریم که برای زندگی کردن دو کشور بریم Kena i mogu li da zamislim da sam na njegovom mestu, hipotetički da pričam, da sad ja i ne znam sto hiljada Srba, nebitno Mađara, Nemaca, nebitno ga, da dođu u Afganistan i da mi počnemo da urlamo, rušimo, napadamo, udaramo na tuđe granice, šta bi bilo? Agar kešvara moj hod mi bud, a valen ka hodno ovaj taraf ne mi omladim. V doma, nagar, masalan, چرای اگر شرایط خوب داشته باشیم افغانستان مثلا بتونیم از هر لحاظ برای کسی که مهاجر میاد به افغانستان ما برای ما مهاجر خیلی عزیز هم مثل یک میمان ما متوجه می باشیم و هستیم This guy is moving through your country Can you understand and accept his temporary presence in your country? I ni on jedini, mnogi od nas bi tere da budem ovde možda privremeno takva situacija it seems the only thing we can we can agree on is that you'd both like to have a German passport, right? It's <laughs> the only thing we have in common. <laughs> Jokes aside, ultimately they want the same thing, but for different reasons. Stefan wants Fahim to leave, and Fahim wants to go, but he can't find a path out of Serbia. It was Hungary that led the way in shutting down the Balkans route into Europe. They built a 170 kilometer long fence on the border with Serbia to stop the migrant surge six years ago. When they built this, the Serbian government had a completely different approach. They wanted to be more compassionate and to efficiently process the migrants moving through. And yet, sometime in the last year, that position has clearly changed. The Serbian government have built an almost identical fence on their southern border with North Macedonia. We haven't been able to get permission to go anywhere near it. But we did manage to obtain some footage, which shows the new fence being built. It happened last summer, in secret, with access to the site blocked by police. Serbia's interior ministry won't answer questions about it. So we asked the communications boss of the Commissariat for Refugees and Migration. Everybody who needs help, we are helping. 
On the other hand, though, mm -hmm. it seems like Serbia has started to mirror the, the same policies as countries like Hungary and Croatia. There's this fence on the North Macedonian border. I'm sure that we don't have the same policy as Croatia and Hungary. You know, the border between Macedonia and Serbia, it was made in order to prevent or to control uh, the situation if the new big river of migrants, which was on horizon, you know, uh, are coming to Serbia. I think that's, that's the reason why the government wants to, to see uh, how, how we can, in the best way, manage the situation. I'm still deep confident that Serbia is, uh, is really uh, different in that way. As for Mohamed, I couldn't leave Serbia without tracking him down again. I found him back where he started, in Maidan. He says he's been pushed back three times by force. How did they do that? Uh, by leave. They, they kicked yeah. you? Mm. Tell me about what you're leaving behind. I leave my uh, wife and my, uh, my daughter, seven months or eight months. What happened to your family? I leave the home to go to find the work. I uh, listen to the sound around. It's have a bombing, but it's very hard. Mm. I saw my home in Idlib broken, and the uh, ambulance is find anybody. I losing my mind. I'm sure. <laughs> Where is my wife? Where is my daughter? Where is my family? The free, free army. Okay. It's told for me your wife and your daughter has died. And after that, really I'm losing my mind. I cry, I fight, I... Like a crazy, mm. you know? When you saw your daughter is crying at night and crying and uh, smiling with you and... Uh, you know, and I take my wife, uh, I promise to her if we live for 30 or 40 or 50 years in future. But I don't do that. Do you still think about them? Yeah. Always. All the time. What are you hoping? When you get to Europe, do you feel like you'll be able to recover from that, that experience? Yeah. Why? Because I need that. Mm. I wish you luck, Mohammed. I'm going to have to stay in touch, OK? OK. No problem. Mohammed, like all the migrants I met, wasn't just pushed from his homeland. He was also pulled to Europe, pulled to his cousins, who took this route before him and were welcomed on arrival, pulled to the hope of a new start. Despite the obstacles, migrants like him have no choice now but to keep trying. When you're this close, the pull is just too strong. Thank you.